everyone, I'm Kevin, Lois well, Knowles Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's High Tech Snow Trooper, the 1993 Snowstorm. Sometimes collectors refer to this as Balcor figure number 12. Because in 1993, all the basic line figures were given a Balcor subtitle, and starting in 1992, all the figures were numbered. Now, unfortunately, Snowstorm here does not make any comic book appearances, at least not in the old of a comic run of G.I. Joe, and doesn't make any cartoon appearances that I know of. But he is still a very significant figure to me and this channel, because when I started this channel almost 10 years ago, I looked on YouTube just to see who else was doing G.I. Joe videos, and one of the earliest ones that I could find was some fellow who had done a review on Snowstorm. Now, unfortunately, he wasn't a uh, reviewer as such. He had done several different videos. I don't know what the subjects were, but they weren't uh, toy reviews. What he was reviewing a Snowstorm for was because it was his childhood toy. So that was a very significant video for him. And while I had taken note of his format and the amount of information he gave out, it actually influenced how I started out doing my reviews the following year. So this actually gives me an opportunity to say thank you to that uh, that one lost video and reviewer. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the guy or his video anymore. He probably took them down or, uh, I don't know, maybe labeled them as something different. Unfortunately, I just, I just, unfortunately, just couldn't find them. So if by any chance that he's actually watching this video, I know it's a small chance, but hey, you never know, I do want to thank him. And this video will actually help this whole channel come full circle. First, I'm going to take a look at Snowstorm's accessories. Now, a lot of 1993 figures came with accessories which were on a generic tree. So a lot of the parts are shared between a lot of the figures in 1993, and a lot of those parts themselves were not original. So, Snowstorm here came with a rather large rifle, but this was originally based on the 1990 Bullhorns rifle, which itself was a Star AUG. Next, he came with a submachine gun, which was originally the 1988 Hit and Runs Colt 9mm submachine gun, the Colt 635. And also from Hit and Run, we have his knife. And from the 1988 Shockwave, we have his pistol. Now, what was sort of brand new to 1993 figures were a lot of these spring action missile launchers. So, this is called, what's listed on the contest list of the card, a glacier gun. And it came with two of these missiles. We have a little button on the back here, and when you push it down, this thing launches the missile. Now, this thing was also used between quite a few other figures. I believe the 1993 Cross Country, 1993, I want to say Bazooka or Roadblock, and as well as the 1994 version of Snowstorm also got this same rocket launcher. And last but not least, he comes with a battle stand. As you can see, the stand is molded in the same color as the rest of his accessories because it came on the same parts tree. Snowstorm has a very spacesuit-like outfit, and you might think that I would have an issue with how it's sculpted, but really, I don't. In fact, I really like the way it's sculpted because, to me, it makes a lot of sense. It makes even more sense because it's explained on his file card. However, I would like to point out two things. The first is his helmet, or what's listed on the file card as a heat circulating helmet with anti-fogging mask. Now as you can see it has a full face shield. It's actually connected to the bottom so it is actually fully enclosed. Something that you can't say for some G.I. Joes which should have fully enclosed helmets but they actually kind of miss the bottom of the chin for some strange reason. 
but this is actually glued onto his helmet. It's not supposed to be removed. However, I find that the glue used on all the Snowstorm figures were is a very light or was very just prone to drying out because it's fairly easy just to pop this thing right off of his head here. Now as you can see, underneath he has a fully sculpted face and fully painted, so that's really nice. But one very unfortunate part about this mask is that it's curved in such a way that if you look at Snowstorm's face in profile, it actually warps his face a little bit, making his nose seem gigantic. Whereas if you just look at the sculpt by itself, he has a rather normal looking nose. The other thing I'd like to take a look at is his ice crunching traction boots. Snowstorm's boots are kind of unusual, but you might not think so if you don't have anything to compare it to. So let's compare it to the 1987 Avalanche figure, another Arctic figure, and you can see that Snowstorm's boots are gigantic. They're rather thick. I mean, there's nothing like that on the rest of his figure. It's just his boots. However, even though they might look goofy if you're not really kind of used to it, the fact of the matter is, is that if you spend any time in the snow, like half an hour, you will be begging for boots like this. They look so insulated and comfortable. Now, if there's one thing that I really don't like about Snowstorm, it's got to be his color scheme. He has this craft dinner orange all over his body. Now, granted, I understand how bright colors make sense in certain military situations, like uh, hazard duty, bomb disposal technicians, and even pilots who are ejecting out of their uh, craft have to have bright orange on them. But this guy, there's no excuse as to why he has bright orange. I mean, it's like 50% of this guy is bright orange and 50% is the white, which I think he should be. However, if you don't like the orange, like me, you do have a choice. You have a choice, of course, of orange or blue. Blue making far more sense. And while the blue here is a little bit dark, it's still a cool color and makes more sense in an Arctic setting. He was released just a few months after this one. He is a variant of this figure. Now, usually variants aren't so radically different. And when they are, at least one or the other is, you know, quite valuable. But in this case, they're worth about the same. Now, one of the reasons why this was released a few months afterwards is because this was actually a figure meant for a different line. He was actually meant for the Eco Warriors line. And all of the figures in the Eco Warriors line are, of course, hazard duty figures who wear very bright colors. Now, I'm not even sure why they bothered to change the colors if they were just going to continue to use the figure, but they did. And a few months later, after he was released, most of the figures look like this. The only difference in the paint mask, it seems, is on the blue guy, as you can see on the side of his head, the piping is actually picked out in orange, whereas on the original figure, that is just plain. The Balakor line was a really funny line, to be perfectly honest, with some new figures clearly meant to be part of the basic line, but then we have figures like this who are cancelled figures from a previous line just sort of shoved into there. I mean, it's not like the Balcor line was a small line which could have been beefed up by these cancelled figures. The line was like 36 figures long, so that was pretty much twice the length of any previous basic line of figures. But the most interesting thing is how inconsistent they were with the card art for these changed figures which were dumped into the line. And Snowstorm was really no exception to that because well, clearly he has the orange outfit for this card, but they didn't change it when they made the blue figure for it. As a matter of fact, the following year, they had a third version of Snowstorm in a gray and black outfit, and they still used this orange outfit for his new card. Because Snowstorm didn't appear in any media, it's really easy just to treat Snowstorm as a generic G.I. Joe, basically a green shirt for the Arctic environment. And I think that's what I'll do. It's actually fairly easy to do because it's fairly easy to get a snowstorm on the aftermarket. He's fairly cheap.
But you'll also notice that he has more accessories than he can possibly hold, meaning that you can have two side by side with completely different weapon sets. Normally, I let you, the viewer, read the file card at your leisure, but there are a couple of things that I want to point out, and quite frankly, it's kind of a mystery to me. I'm not quite sure how to take this. Because the first thing you'll notice is that Snowstorm was born in Havana, Cuba. A very, well, let's just say very hot country. A non-American country at that. So he is kind of like Iceberg in a way, where he comes from a uh, just sort of a very hot background and he just wound up being in a very cold environment as his military specialty. Now, it doesn't say anything in here about him immigrating to the United States. I know a lot of collectors just kind of assumed that he did. However, you'll notice that he is actually noticed by Colonel Courage, which is a great little name drop. They name dropped a lot of other characters and vehicles in these 1993 uh, file cards just for a bit of a cross sell. But anyway, you'll notice that Colonel Courage actually meets him in a Caribbean area. And I think the only Caribbean United States uh, place is the U.S. Virgin Islands, I think. But there are plenty of other Caribbean uh, places which are not U.S. So is he from the U.S. or not? Is he like Big Ben or, or Skymate or something like that who came from a, a different army and he was just so, sort of a joint commanded into the G.I. Joe team? I don't know. It doesn't explain that very fully here. And one other thing that you'll notice is his serial number. Now, most U.S. serial numbers are at least nine digits or longer. However, his is only seven. What's going on here? And of course, the last thing I want to point out is a little bit of geography again, because he has a little quote here saying that he kind of wished he was assigned south of the equator. Um, I think what he means is on the equator, because the equator is the hottest uh, region of the Earth. The farther north you go, the colder it gets. The farther south you go, the colder it gets. As I mentioned before, the Battle Corps series actually had a lot of figures in it. So much so that Snowstorm here isn't the only Arctic figure in it, and usually we only get one in the basic line. But we also have a new version of Iceberg and a new version of Frostbite, who is a driver but didn't come with a vehicle for some strange reason. However, prior to Snowstorm, our prior basic figure is the 1990 Sub-Zero figure. However, I don't think that's a fair comparison, as Snowstorm is supposed to be a high-tech snow trooper. All of that high-tech is supposed to be in his suit and not his, in his accessories. But I still think that this is a fair comparison of who he is supposed to be replacing. The 1987 Avalanche and the Battle Force 2000 line, which primarily used prototype and stuff which was uh, futuristic in its design. So just who would Snowstorm have been fighting against on the Cobra side? Well, we got three Arctic figures in the Joe line, but no Arctic figures in the Cobra line at the same time. We did get a vehicle. So the only figure that I can really think of is the 1991 version of the Snow Serpent, or Snow Serpent version 2. They both come with spring action weapons, and they actually both come with a lot of other weapons besides that. So I think that they are fairly evenly matched. If you're looking for a snowstorm on the aftermarket, as I said before, he's not a very popular figure with collectors, and he's a fairly common figure on top of that. So you will find him for a very cheap price, even though he comes with all of these accessories. As a matter of fact, you will often find him complete on the card as well for a very reasonable price, considering the age of this figure. However, there are still a few things that you do have to look out for if you're looking for one. Now, like I've said, he comes with a massive amount of accessories, so one or two of these things might be missing and you might just not notice it at first, so just be aware of that. Of course, his face shield pops out quite regularly, so that's something you have to look out for. And some sellers just don't bother selling them with the battle stand, and that's really up to you as to whether this completes a figure or not. The other thing is, of course, white plastic. He is a white plastic figure. And even though you can dunk him in some hydrogen peroxide to bring out the white in a yellowed figure, I would actually caution you doing that with the blue figure because this is, of course, blue paint. So this might actually fade 
this figure, whereas it might not fade on this figure. Um, this was just, you know, uh, a bit. It's molded in the same color as it, because an example here, but here is what. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.